halfway point of ESL Pro League tonight, last day of opening week. It's been a lot of fun. It's about to get more so. I'm here at the Xfinity Analyst Desk. I've got the Bears. I've got James. They're part of the reason why this has been so much fun. No, Jason, that's too kind of you. I like okay. it when you're mean. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I a little too much. I can be mean. Um, we're actually getting word that the other matches were late with that overtime and everything. Like, it's been a lot of fun, so our job's going to be a little bit easier this segment. Players are pretty much ready to go, so we're just going to get right through these rosters. We'll bring them up for you. Like we said, Team Liquid taking on CLG, two of the biggest organizations we have in North American Counter-Strike. And on your screen, there's CLG, Cutler, Kusa, Ethan, FNS, and Ricky. Ricky, uh, you know, transfer from Renegades just a while back, obviously, the team we just watched, but he's been very effective on this lineup. Right up. Yes, he has, and he should have his name backwards, too, so he'd be Hecker. I notice you still call Ethan uh, Nazi. No, it has to be Nazi. That's a cool name, you know, Ethan backwards. He's, you know, he's like, he's a naughty boy, and, you know, Ethan, you know, this sounds average, but yeah. naughty. Yeah. You get scared of that. Well, then you go the other way, and you get to Relta. Relta. That's not as cool as I don't know. It sounds like a like a bedtime monster that your parents would tell you about when you're, when you're younger. Yeah, yeah. your broccoli that's, or the that's what I was kitchen. Of. <laughs> you know, that up. the well tech. I would like to live inside of your brain just for a day, Eric. That would be an interesting experience. I think. Oh well, take some substances and get there at any time. <laughs> All right, uh, James. Uh, how we feel at CLG's play? I know you've been liking this uh, this T side uh, that they've been they've been showing up with this season. Yeah, uh, we saw a super methodical T side when they played against Cloud Nine. Uh, I think it was, who was going Ivy for them? I think it was Ethan working that yes. Ivy area, uh, which is actually kind of interesting, right? Because usually on your T side default, you'll kind of play the same area that you play on CT side, and Ethan's been playing inner. He's like that inner anchor, right? Uh, but he has the timing down coming out Ivy. They're really good at hitting that outer bomb site. Not make, not allowing the CTs just to look straight forward at Pop Dog and Team Main. Yeah, Ethan's a young player that seems to be uh, playing outside of his inexperience, so to speak. And another guy who's doing just that is Twist. Very impressive early on in his uh, in his time in Team Liquid. A phenomenal uh, performance at the PGL Major Qualifier. Still not able to get there at the end of it, but he's surrounded by I mean what you kind of call an all-star lineup of, of the North American scene over the past couple of years. You know, Elise JDM was you know was at one point the best offer in the region. Uh, took that over from. Skadoodle for a very short period of time. Uh, and now Stanislaw is the end game leader, but this is a squad that has high hopes. Yeah, they have a lot of high hopes. Hopefully they can bring a little more consistency in their game as they tend to lose maps that they shouldn't have. And I think maybe a little bit has to do with the inconsistency of JDM. As you said, he was the best offer for a while, but he's been a little quiet here. And I want to I want to see more of JDM just pop off. You know? yeah. I want to see some, I want I want him to fake it until he makes it. I want to see that confidence, kind of like you have. I, I know, I no fake everything. No matter what you do, doesn't matter. Just go at it full bore, you know? It's full best bore. I like that. Big fans of the Lounge Nation. I think one of the big takeaways from Team Liquid, as much as we like CLG's T side, uh, Liquid on the CT side, some of these ways they're choosing to be aggressive to open up rounds has been very cool. We saw some of those train boosts the other day, um, and JDM's a big part of that, which is quite cool. Mm -hmm. You guys appreciating those? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think they did the top green pick from on top of the pallet uh, on CLG to get Skadoodle on one yeah. of the rounds. So just nice little gimmicky plays. And uh, yeah, no, I'm super excited for this one. I think this one's going to go the distance. Yeah, I'm excited as well. We're going to get the odds up on the screen so we see exactly uh, where these wow. two teams stand. And Liquid, I mean, that's that's pretty decent favorites. It, it is. Uh, and this, I believe this is CLG's map pick. There's some... Well, we mentioned, like, the CLG team coming into the season was a little bit overshadowed, obviously, by the roster changes of Cloud9, obviously, by, you know, Team Liquid's improved success before the Major. Um, and maybe this is just a product of that, where they're flying a little bit under the radar still? I think so. They don't have those big names like other teams, other, you know, like, they have Kusin and everybody, but people still just kind of shove them under the rug. Yep. Well, we've got some big names that we're not going to shove under the rug. We're going to put them right on camera. It's the Casters. It's, it's Scrawny and it's Launders. You boys ready for this uh, this big brawl of the North American teams? I'm very excited. I'm yes. very excited. Absolutely. Especially since it's trained, because we've seen CLG play this so frequently thus far this week. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to add something in, but it's all over now, isn't it? Let's see you forward. later. So instead of you're exuberantly looking forward to this match. It's another way you could put that. Oh. Just letting you know. Well, thank you, James. The new guy. The new guy. Newer than this guy. That's <laughs> right. My goodness, <laughs> I feel uh, I feel quite honored. Moses says big names. Mm -hmm. I think he's just playing it up. Yeah, he's just talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep things serious, Launders. We have too much fun. 
<clears throat> so, um, how do you feel about this one? What are your thoughts? They're the valuable ones. Blue versus blue. Blue, very aesthetic. Aesthetically pleasing matchup. Ooh. Very French. What did I say? Blue versus vu. What does vu mean? You, actually, you were born in Montreal. <laughs> vu means <laughs> you. I was briefly born in Montreal. In terms of others. I left as soon as I could walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you ran. <laughs> All righty. Goofs and gaffs aside, it's time for CLG versus Team Liquid. We've got the double smoke, double flash frag on the T side. That's where CLG resides. And Finesse tries to head out towards the box halls, only to be met by two players from Liquid. It's going to be Stan and JDM. I'm not sure going to see that Deagle. Not the first time Ricky's bought a Deagle on the pistol round, likes to do this, and sometimes. Is able to get a kill. We've seen him like peek out T-Con, I think, and get a couple of kills with his Deagle. Likes these angles quite a bit. Common thing to do. I mean, you can get the gush with the Glock. It's not quite as satisfying. It's also not quite as accurate at that range. And uh, as they move up towards T-Con, it looks like it's going to be an outer split. And they sent people Ivy to make it to make some presence at the very least. Smokes cascade over the site. Flash is going to plume. Terrors start to push. They've gotten themselves onto the site, but there's a little boost over the top of the smoke here. Ethan is underneath the heavens, and he's just going to go to the top side of the ladder as Finesse finds twists. JDM and Kusta trading some frags back and forth, leaving CLG with an edge and a bomb plant. But JDM's coming to the backside as Nitro is still in Ivy, revealing himself from ladder. And now he's all that's left. Ethan, still above, creates the distraction. It's Rike with the kill, and it's CLG with the pistol. It's becoming a very popular smoke to smoke Ivy like that. And uh, again, it's just like such a such a high high point of contact. And they also baited someone into making sure that they keep in touch with Ivy and know that there is nobody at the end of it. And uh, that allowed that smoke to be that much more effective. Apart from that, Z for the rotators. And everyone else just bust out and try to kill people. Sometimes you'll lose the USP, sometimes you won't. But it doesn't take away from the strat, from the viability of the strat. Finesse just watching the bottom of the ladder, trying to keep Liquid at bay. Although there are two players in here, up close and personal. Frag grenade goes down, that's going to soften them up. But it's not going to scare them out. Not quite. Can be even a tricky situation there to hold with your AK. Actually, the bomb moving back to Ivy. No ladder presence, just T-Con and four Ivy. Yeah, this is a very single approach. Although it does allow for Ethan to find JDM. He was pushed up towards T-Con. Twist is going to swing out from one side as his teammate abandons ship. <laughs> just ran away. Completely bails on him. Stanislaw just hides to the corner, but he does get one kill. It's going to be traded back by Kusta as we start to watch CLG go wrapping round. Not to the B site, but rather the old bomb. CT still standing with two, both of which on CZs. Ethan. Finding Nitro, he's just been playing T-Con this whole round long. Spots a Liege, who would love to come into the bomb site, but he's going to get no chance to do such. Instead, he walks away. Hmm. Quite like the approach. I wonder if uh, Stan was a JDM or on different pages as to how to approach that double peek. And they're, when they do that double peek, they don't actually isolate one person. They have two different people fighting them, so it doesn't... It's not really that effective. I guess the only thing is that that second person isn't focusing his attention on the only person peeking. But because it's two individual fights at distance with the pistol, maybe he felt like, all right, we've got to, you know, that we know they're there, and it's actually more than just a couple people. Why don't we let them in? And now that we know they're coming from Ivy with 30 seconds remaining, they're certainly going to commit, and we can find better angles to deal with this. But um, I think if that were the case, it only looks like it makes sense if both people do the same thing. If they both stay there, if they both leave. So, on different pages a little bit. JDM saving for the op, as you would expect from him. And 
what looks like it might be a fast outside. Yeah. Not catching anyone going to ladder. It's going to be Ricky instead with the Galittle. Does tag up a leash. That was, of course, the only man with Kevlar here for Liquid. The bare bones by. CLG have actually played really patiently on their anti ecos so far this week. I like that. I think it's fine. Wait for pushes is always fine as long as you just when you execute. Stay as a unit. Do it convincingly. Follow through. Follow through. Once you're out, you just have to commit. It's getting a little bit far from his team at this point, but seems to be doing not too bad. Though, well, his pistols are doing a bit of chip damage. Finally, a kill is found, and it goes to the way of CLG. Cutler, going to get answered upon. Oliege hits it with the CZ. Hmm. This round looks like it's actually not quite over just yet, and opposite bomb hasn't been smoked out. Ali's doing damage, kill from Nitro, 2v2. 20 seconds left as well. They don't follow through, instead they hit the brakes. Ethan's able to clear up, up close, but it's Stanislaw now. And he's just gonna creep his way to the site. Tries to find Rike up close, but Rike will execute that one. So, CLG will convert their point, but they definitely were sweating bullets. Yeah, and they did it at a price, and they dropped two AKs. So they like dropped two AKs at Galil. I didn't, and decided to move slowly. I think because of that fact, probably would have only benefited from having an SMG lead the way, get a little, get really aggressive, just start killing people when they go outside, and just have all the pit rifles behind them to trade out. But they were really just doing this kind of like slow walk contact play, and got kind of spread out, um, which just gave Liquid so many opportunities to find fights. And as soon as JDM gets that off, it's taken away. Kusta wins his initial duel. Full HP, and uh, they don't doesn't hang on to T-Con control, at least. Liquid found a way to buy time. I don't know where JDM died, but it looks like Twist has recovered it. On the bomb train. CLG yet again going to try and use this heavy IV presence. Twists will get into position. Just before they arrive, Kusta on the cross. Tease jumping by. And Twist's shot is a miss. Still postured for this A site is CLG. There's no one for TCON, but they do have a heavy ladder presence. Yeah, I mean, this is a crossfire. Ladder and Ivy, and they're out. This could be tough for the defenders to hold, but they do it with ease. Holding all four back. The fifth frag not found as Kusta at least takes one, but he himself now, one versus three. The odds are slim. Stanislaw comes up from the spawn and finds Liquid their opening round. I mean, that was a crossfire set. Two defenders per bomb site. Nice play by Nitro. And a great hold by Twist. It looks like you caught CLG looking at each other. A player up against the wall, like clearing hell as one's at hell, clearing Ivy or something. That looked really weird. I don't know what exactly happened, but uh, he found a nice way to deal with those Ivy players. Seemed very promising. They got all the way out. They even had ladder. They didn't get opt initially. Still, two players from Liquid went full hero mode. Great opportunity for Liquid to put a round on the board early on, especially having lost the pistol conversions to CLG. We know their CT side can be solid if they're able to hold on Ivy. So the real test will be getting this back underneath them. They're going to play with the double tech nine, three rifles, and a solid chunk of utility. Ethan taking a gander to the backside of the bomb site, but no heads present themselves. I like the inner hit on low utility. FNS can watch the flank with a tech nine, and uh, as long as they don't mess up the timing on their execution, they shouldn't. They could avoid getting off. So counter smoke comes out. JDM is going to walk in front of it. Actually gets killed for throwing his Molotov. And Stanislaw is going to be standing in one of his own. Ethan able to find one frag before being traded out. 
here comes Kusta to the backside of Stan, taps to the head, and then retreats with an AK now in hand. Liege, Nitro, and Twists tasked with the clutch. 3v4 on the retake. Still have utility to play with. And Liege has an opportunity to push in from Oil. Single smoke could block off the molly. That CLG still hang on to, but it's Kusta going big. Taking two as Liege responds back with two of his own. He doesn't have a smoke, but he does have that kit. Now he feels like he has to leave, sprays for Cutler, and will still retreat. Retrieving the AWP as oh. Finesse blows up with the bomb. Oh, wow, gets all four kills too. Damn, very expensive round for CLG. They didn't have that much money. I mean, they can armor AK, uh, no problem with the full loss, but it's gonna be, it's still gonna be kind of tight. That was really well played. But nice kills from Kusa as well. Steal that up. With the AK on top of it. Yeah, I do like the I do like the the low by inner. Yeah. It's always nice. Um, it's really easy to hold ladder with anything. So to you know, to, that's a good way to utilize the fact that you have a Tech Nine. And um, JDM kind of in response to the Z smoke decided to run through it. I think in terms of him doing it, it can make sense. But he took a little bit too long. Uh, threw the, decided to throw the molly out, jump through, and obviously Kusta's already down the ramp. And the smoke had plumed in Z, so that means Kusta's timing was just fine. It wasn't like too early to try to catch him off guard. And JDM still fell right into his hands. He had the opportunity to go stay, to either stay in Z, which would have been a problem for Stanislaw, or to go back around to the back trains and off people crossing, but kind of went the third route and maybe a little bit too late. Ethan toying with the idea of falling downwards, but Nitro, he would welcome him with open arms. Back to the B site is CLG, at least for now, just trying to pry downwards. It's quiet on train. To decide to run across. Oh, well, he looks for a fight, but takes out. Wow, Stanislaw, nice long range CZ kill. Good stuff. It's going to leave Ethan alone for now, but the forces do arrive. Cutler clearing Stan as Ethan takes the next one and then furthers this fight. But Nitro's in on the flank, walking through this smoke as the flashbang pops. He can't get out. While Twists takes a kill, the smoke will now fade. Two versus three up close on the sidearms. Twists finds another one. And all of a sudden, there's a chance. No kid. Nitro wants to clear upper. Kusta uses the smoke up close. AK for the hands of Twists. This is now a retreat. They're going to call it. They're going to save it. They're going to give it away. CLG take five, but at a heavy cost. Yeah, good smoke. Who knows what the round looks like if Elias is able to take that first fight. He was, his aim was so good last round, you'd assume he'd win. But uh, you never know. And um, even though he pulled out that smoke, got away. Stanislaw was able to get the first kill. So it was kind of a broken buy on both sides. Um, even though CLG had just won, they didn't have all that much money because the amount of damage that Elias did. And Liquid kind of made the best of a bad situation. But... Now, don't even have, don't have enough to buy behind this AK. You're just gonna use it with armor and, uh, and upgrade their pistols. Solid start so far for CLG, looking really clean in their decision making. Liquid have made a decision and that's to stack the A site. Five players early on. Of course, twists with the fruits of his labor that one single rifle on Liquid. But CLG, they're not going towards B. Instead, they have those four Ivy players early on. And to execute into the A site with this little of information, how big of a risk are they running? Honestly, as long as they do it together, they still have a huge advantage. But uh, I definitely like anti-eco. I, I would love to send one person there late to put a bow on the round if it needs to be, but other than that, focus on T-Con and ladder. 
It'll come in from Tcon and Ivy. Nitro inside the corner. First man to fall as Rikes traded back. Twists is still standing. That's the single AK still up. He's going to pull it back, dealing more damage, taking it to the 2v2, and leaving his teammates to clutch. The bomb pinched in as Alige sprays away. He's down to four shots, and he drops as JDM now has to clutch this. He's retrieved the AK, but Finesse, stylistically, Drops him down. CLG, 6-1. to one. Good attempts. It was Liquid actually picked the two choke points that they needed to focus on with all of their pistols, even though they were just generally outside. And uh, FNS could have died in either of these situations. So good composure, nice recoil control, and uh, good crosshair placement. Fast entry by Kusta, not on an op. And no cannons on Liquid. This is a full rifle round. Kusta spotted regardless as Liquid try to boost a man on top of the bomb site. Kusta tries to wrap round. Cutler is able to trade JDM off of site. Now the Molotovs go raining forward and bouncing back. Rike burns Nitro to take the man advantage. Everybody on site. Kusta next to fall as Liquid swinging it back. Leave only finesse. 1v3. He's been able to creep his way up close. Twists. The first man to make contact loses his head. He sprays for the next, and now it's down oh. to the 1v1 up oh. close. It's oh Stan, my God. and Finesse jumps back round. He's got the high side, swaps to the Glock, but thinks about it. 50 seconds, and he's going to retreat. Gets into Z, and will certainly plant it B. What's his play here? He can plant opposite side train, yeah. Make it seem as though he's going CT. He might not actually want to, however. He probably doesn't want to let this bomb get tapped just because of how low his HP is. Smoke Knight dissipates soon. He's got to decide how he's going to initiate contact here. Seems a little bit indecisive. I don't know if he's stuck on the ladder. Stan's going to drop down off of the spools, walking into the cross oh. there. Finesse with a beautiful one versus three. Right. Almost looked like he lost it. But he pulls it back. Yeah, he read it perfectly. That was really nice. I mean, I was wondering, you know, is that angle going to be good enough? Even though uh, he held it perfectly. But here's Twist to go down. Our Heaven Man, I thought, for sure gets the kill. And uh, I was wondering what he was doing on the bomb train when he was trying to fight Stan when he had such low HP. And it seemed like he was like, all right, if, I, if I'm able to get to the side, I can run through Z. Yeah, that part wasn't so beautiful. That was a little sloppy. But hey, he dodged the shots. He's able to get out, opens it up. And Rikke does the same this round as he finds the kill at B. Stans dropped out already. Again, a round where Liquid are coming in with only a single gun. That being the ump of Elige. Everyone's pretty low, they got a kill. I think here's you know just change it up a little bit. Don't let don't let Liquid just linger too much. Group up, trade. This has allowed for Liquid to get closer, but shoulder peak is spotted. Ethan peppering the door frame and then pushing in as the smokes and flashes pop. Twists is able to stop him now, but Rikke from above responds. Ness clears a liege, leaving these last two CTs close to the train yard. Cutler stopping the first and tapping for number two. That's now CLG with an 8-1 lead, Launders. Where is the defense? Where is the defense, yeah. Uh, now that everything's going their way, they have options. They've done a, a couple of fast inner hits that worked really well. They've done IV control that worked really well. The one round they won was actually, the one round that Liquid won was a round where they got they're actually down like two people outside, just Nitro and I think GDM, and they end up getting like two kills apiece. So even in that round, CLG had done everything right up until the point of sick individual plays. Now Liquid have saved up enough funds to find the double op setup. Still no sniper for that of Kusta. Help but 
feel like despite them winning rounds at each bomb site, it's been more convincing towards B. Yeah, it definitely has. Two ops, however, they could really blow this if they decide to peek too early. Oh, but it's the ops that are outside, I think. Exactly that. Stanislaus still holds this line. He's been able to take two, but Cutler stops him then and there. 3v3 retake to unfold with the double op setup. Liquid are in a really tough spot. Rikke could find Nitro on the walk round the corner. He doesn't. But Cutler is here to trade. Swings out and takes it. So now it is only the ops left over. Finesse pinned in. CT is pushing up. And he hears the man of the ladder, so he swings to the other side where JDM will take him. Cutler able to drop one. Oh, his beats. Oh, but it's too late. Done. Wow. Just like that, they recover the op, but that's it. Even though CLG all die, they win. And nothing's more important than that right now. Solid hold from Stanislaw. Two kills. Even has a good opportunity on this third, on this third guy. Yeah, tags him up slightly, but Cutler had already manage the frag. So a tactical pause at a 9-1 score. Now, I wouldn't be as blown away had this been a defense from CLG, but mm -hmm. we're talking T-side train. Nine rounds. I'm impressed. Yeah, and uh, you know, if we put it in perspective, when you win all these rounds in a row, it's it's not helping uh, it's not helping Liquid out at, uh, at all, especially since they had a hard reset on that round, but also the fact that they got 1v3'd. These, these things factor into the you know, how many opportunities they've had to win rounds. And you can't let those go, but at the end of the day, even with those rounds, CLG, uh, Liquid still don't have an answer for their inner hit. JDM's missing shots. Remember, this is, of course, a Liquid that lost a game versus Ghost. <laughs> Nuke. Yeah. Not to say anything poorly of Ghost, but obviously this is a team that's being, you know, no, promoted that's from, from the MDL season, a map that, that Liquid have regularly chosen themselves. So No, Liquid are really good at nuke. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really bad loss. I mean that's this is safe to say that, that this could be another hiccup for Liquid so far this season. We all know they're capable of winning these games, but CLG are just getting the best of them. Like you said, their their opportunities have been limited because of the hard reset, because of these clutches going the way of counter logic gaming. Mm. At least now JDM, again the only rifle for Liquid is able to open up shop. There's no reason to like not wait longer because people love to stand in that molly. Like everyone good does it. Um, if they're if they intend to pick, they expect someone to peek once the molly goes down. It's almost become standard practice. So like waiting a couple extra seconds to make sure that they can't play in there, or that they push forward, I guess, is the other option. Which is either cause JDM to take more damage or just not not at the very least not get away with the kill. So comes out for left side Ivy. Uh, JDM taking more molly damage. The only damage is he's taking this round. It's good that he's moving around. Yeah, trying to stay dynamic, trying to catch CLG off guard. Of course, CLG have seen nobody other than him, so I wonder if they still question whether this is a buy, or at least of what strength they did purchase. JDM in another position, but gets flashed off of this. Still lingering towards the site, catches Finesse. Now Stan from the top side of the train, drops the bomb to be traded back. That's Kusta down for the count, and Cutler inbound. 1v4, Liquid have done it. Finding one of those rounds of their own, winning despite the disadvantage, and immediately putting CLG into economic distress. JDM doing a great job of staying mobile that round, getting that initial pick in her in the molly, and then moving over to Ivy to take a shot. Then actually getting his final kill on the bomb train as FNS tried to sell some kind of fake. And uh, that's that's the important part because that's two kills, 3v5. The last three players run down inner versus two people. Not much you can do. Liquid had the superior setup. The deagle buy here from CLG. Winning nine consecutive rounds only to go to deagles the moment they lose one. Yeah, that's a good point. Liquid have done a lot of economic damage round after round. Even on two of their B hits, Alige had like a 1v4 without the bomb defuse. So four entire kills. And then another one, uh, I think the other retake, Twist managed to save an op. All, all members of CLG died. Yep. 
multiple rounds where CLG win despite having zero players left over. So, again, Liquid have kind of been on the door doorstep of turning this back. And winning that last round with a single op in play, that puts their economy in a great spot. 9-6 isn't great, but it's certainly better than what could have been. This is an easy cleanup from Liquid across the board. They're able to convert their point. And I mean, look at the cash left over already. This is as if they've been on a winning spree for some time now. Yeah, it certainly feels like it. And it's only two rounds in total. So can they close out this half? Again, it's not going to be great, but it could always be worse. Mm -hmm. Certainly could. Right through the molly to take T-Con control. See, notice that Liquid used use a lot of nades to stop any kind of outside rushes. CLG haven't given them any, so haven't actually had to take damage for it. Oh, Cutler just oh I see. Ethan's down there already. <laughs> Ambitious. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Oh, Nitro. Fine. Nice. Good play. Oh. Then Ethan catches him on his exit. Elise trading it back, so Liquid doing their own of holding this on. But it's Stan to keep the man advantage. Spots Rickey to the top side of the train yard. And Rickey wants to retreat because the bomb's heading to B. Which is entirely for the taking. JDM having been pulled into the Z connector. Um, what is going on right now? He didn't even have nades to throw, I don't think. And like, if he was going to fake, okay, I guess it's just coming back to ladder. That, of course, has given time for JDM to go back to the opposite site, leaving Twists with the AK all the way on the back of Ivy. But the real playmaker is going to be Stan. He sits inside the cubby. Rick A walks right in, drops to the headshot, and leaves Finesse. Another 1v3. Are you calling it? No, because he's already been boxed in. He's been tagged up and spotted, but could have found the first. JDM <laughs> peeks back in. Just for the hell of it shoots, basically. Knows that it's just right beside his angle. And uh, Liquid have earned the opportunity to get six now. With that rounds, are going to have a an extra one. And in the following round, we'll have much more money than CLG. And the double off. FNS smoke flash. Everyone else just buying pistols. Seems like they're going to... Well, they're just walking halls. Oh, they might actually just save the smoke, it seems, and use the, the flash to just flash close ramp. Not sure. Love for a bomb plant. And they'd hope for a frag. Grab a gun, push forward. Options are open. Stan, just jumping. Oh, it's a bad one. Falls into the crack. Stanislaw burns Kusta, sprays for another two. Great job of stopping this. Swaps to the sidearm, closes this gap, oh. stops the bomb, and even Finesse has to struggle for his frag. He tries to cross, but at that point, Liquid have arrived, and now they have five. A very real opportunity to take the sixth round. Nice play from Stanislaw. That initial Molotov to deny a uh, plant, and even when it goes up, able to adjust his aim, get that headshot right before it was about to get down. I'm curious if that affected um, what kind of guns and stuff they have this round. No, Kusa's gotten off. It's just a couple of nade sets that they maybe could have put to use. FNS couldn't afford head armor as well. That's something. And again, those initial counter nades are really good. They're allowing, um, who is that, Alish to get to ladder safely. That's Push something we haven't again. seen. Yeah, they haven't been so aggressive, but Ivy catches Ricky off guard. Nitro's obvious, also had a lot of impact with his op outside. Liquid have had impact with these ops. The moment they get those double op setups, the second time around, they start putting rounds to the board. It's going to be five consecutive if they can hold on to this five versus three. Gusta oh. crept in, erases Nitro. Now, of course, twists, repositions, great play. Finds the angle from above. Stanislaw stops one on B, so Finesse oh. is next. And Liquid takes six. A three-point lead for CLG.
It was much bigger earlier on, but Liquid are able to close it out, at least giving themselves a chance in the second half, which will come back in just a short break. Don't go too far. This is the ESL Pro League. We'll see you in a bit. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, the city of Odense, GeForce GTX, Lenovo Legion, Bedway, Pay Safeguard, Logitech G, Mountain Dew League, Xfinity, and ESEA. back with Liquid CLG in the opening map of their two this evening. The third map of the night, four to be total. Mm -hmm. Launders, it's a three-point lead still for CLG, but they definitely had the chance to further that success. I mean, a great overwhelming job done early on, and then Liquid with those ops really seemed to cement themselves on the defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did They did find their footing finally. There was a, a good adjustment with the double ops. Stan was obviously doing a great job of inner, which is the funniest part because it seemed like the inner hits were the key for CLG yeah. as they were getting in pretty cleanly, or it seemed like maybe everybody else but Stanislaw was falling apart, and that was the big problem. He was getting two kills like every single time, it felt like. Yeah, that was one of the things that we kind of talked about on the desk prior to the game going live, was that, uh, you know, it's, it seems too often than not that the in-game leader kind of takes on a responsibility that burdens their kill count. Mm -hmm. um, and that Stanislaw is not one of those players. Yeah. This is a prime example of that. He was getting solid holds over on that B site, really stopping any kind of a push. A push that CLG versus their other opponents this week were really relying on early on. Again, they like to hit that B side at the beginning of the T side, and then when that stops working, we see them go mid, we see them go Ivy. I can't help but feel like B was much less successful here tonight. Wow, actually, ADR for CLG looks like they were losing. Highest being 77, going cascading down to 67. Whereas on Liquid, you've got two players with like A level ADR, and <laughs> four players. There's actually three players that are all higher than the highest rated for CLG. Yeah. I mean, even the kill count here from, from Liquid is, is tells us if you look at these stats, then you're assuming coming into the second half that Liquid have the lead. But yeah. That's not the case. Yeah. I mean, we talked about how Liquid were so successful in making those almost retakes towards the B site, yeah. clearing out CLG multiple times. They killed them over and over despite losing rounds. I mean, again, we saw CLG win six consecutive over towards that, that B bomb site. And then the moment they lose a round, it was an immediate Deagle save. Mm -hmm. And it was from that point on that Liquid close out the half. Never did CLG get their feet back underneath them. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like while CLG were putting rounds to the board, their legs were so wobbly the entire time. Yeah. And the moment Liquid kind of put them to rest, they never stood back up. Wow. Wow, indeed. But it's time. The second half set to begin with CLG now on the receiving end of affairs. Finesse with a kit smoke, and Team Liquid are going to have a little bit more utility. As Nitro throws the molly early on, Kusta, he changes direction. It's an expensive pre molly, but that USP can be such a problem at that range. Try to make him shy away. Cutler are going to be happy to take this fight for a little bit, as long as he's got enough health remaining. 
Looks to regress here, but will feel some pressure. So falls back. And a good call at that. Tries to get to the staircase, but Stan catches him in the open and takes a 5v4. CLG trying to get into the B site, reading into that liquid are wrapping all the way round. They're going to push down ramp as well. Kusta still behind the spools, but it's Ethan to take one. Finesse stops it, and that's the bomb. So another 1v3 is what he'll need with the first duel towards spawn. That's Stanislaw just trying to take cover, and instead he takes the headshot. He takes the pistol and gives Liquid a good chance to tie things up. Pretty interesting stuff. I mean, they had that upper molly, and then uh, it ends up being a CT wrap to B. You wouldn't expect to see that based on the early round. And, and interesting response from CLG. They held onto that smoke, were able to, once they knew what was going on, uh, use that smoke to try to push them into the, push them into the heaven side of B. And um, ended up trading out pretty well. But kills on the other part of the map. Our Swools player goes down for free. We didn't get to see it, but we know he died. And overall, it seemed like CLG spots were actually quite good. But Team Liquid's shots were just a little bit hotter. Now we find Team Liquid just setting up for this A execution, not heading anybody aggressively towards upper B. And that's, in fact, where we have a man from CLG, Kusta, to the backside of the boxes. Not that he can do much here, not that anyone should do much, but he's actually the one with the least amount of armor and guns. CLG would love for the T-side to just walk into this stack. Very heavy emphasis on Ivy. I'm curious to see what the difference is going to be for Team Liquid on their anti-egos. Nitro eating that flash. Good pop, though. Just take t on control before it seems like they're about to exit. And I much prefer this, as I was talking about. One Ivy and the rest T-con slash ladder. Definitely gives them some distance. Cutler gives them a bit of damage, but Elyse will best him and look to further this push on. JDM up close, has himself that bomb. Twists will take the trade as Rikke finds one and Ethan does it too. Kusta gets 180 though. Finesse in another clutch opportunity. Taps to the man who's lit. That's Nitro down. But Stan, he covers the cross. See, even though this round came down to the last two players, it was like a much better version of what CLG attempted. CLG sent an extra person Ivy, and the two guys Ivy didn't have that much impact. Um, in that round, Liquid were stacked similarly to the way CLG were, except um, except now we have just more attention to T-Con, and the other main difference is that they actually use utility and advance forward together, as opposed to CLG, who like sent Cuddler to like kind of lurk out through E-Box, fight one person by himself, with everyone taking chip damage along the way. JDM looks to get aggressive. The entirety of Liquid just pushing in. Makes sense, they are just versus the pistols. Nothing crazy should happen. CLG, well, they're heavily outgunned. They're both going to stay to the backside of the train lanes. Rikke's grave should be sealed. All tied up, Launders. All tied piece. up, yeah. The only time a round like that goes awry is if a nade stack comes into T-Con versus the rush. But um, that's not even something you would see people invest in once they've already bought armor in the previous. Kusta's going to grab an op. JDM's going to get one for himself. 9-9 nine to nine now, and it's a brand new game. Liquid look much more alive and uh, have continued a streak off the last half. Elise dropping down ladder fast. No one's here quite yet. <laughs> Man on his head is actually in a pretty good spot. Calculated. Indeed. They actually fall back off as another boost is set. Stanislaw to be thrown across the gap. I believe that goes unnoticed. After having secured that Ivy control, now Liquid just fall away. Yeah, make presence, make it scary. It seemed like someone's lurking. Whether or not you use it, it's just good to always do that. Now we'll see. CLG. Why is he aiming so high? Is there a. It's probably his flash. Of course, both defenders for CLG are over on that oil lane. 
directly underneath above. So if anybody comes pushing outwards, they won't be spotted. Ethan, fully blind, tries to hold this off, and he does. But Twists is able to best Cutler regardless, and then push himself forward on. He's just hoping that Ethan walks into it. I see Molotov's the connector. So Ethan's gonna know that he's close, but Twists, he wants to force this fight. He wants it here and now. Ethan blinded yet again. As Twists takes some shots to the chest, Ethan takes one to the head. And it's still a 3v3. Score and body count is currently tied, but Twists lurks his way behind, only to be denied. It's Finesse and Rike, 2v2. But time, well, that's their enemy here. So both players retreat. They're going to give it up. It's Liquid to get to double digits. The really nice part about that BX queue with the flashes, is you saw Ethan on upper was legitimately, legitimately flashed for three to four seconds, which is really good. It's extremely difficult to flash someone and keep them blind that is that far away. But not only that, his teammate in the site was also blind. So overall, the XU was really strong. They also were able to plant the bomb with only having to kill one person. And then beyond that, play spots. They did a good job pushing up, Twist putting on pressure, and Aliyah getting those two kills. <laughs> Anything for style points. Low buy for CLG. Liquid are going to either assume that they're saving or or force it. You know, sometimes you want to know before you go out, like, are they pulling off some kind of janky buy? They might not know that they recovered enough and want to buy behind this. I don't know if everyone's invested money, but yeah, maybe not. Cutler and Ethan have actually saved a little bit, so we'll see. This off might catch them off guard. It might not. But I think Liquid are probably going to treat this like a rifle. We saw the single weapons of Liquid win rounds. Now it's CLG's turn. They are pushed very aggressively up on that A site. Kusta amongst them. And Rike in Tikon. If he holds this long enough, I was going to say, how long before CLG rotate away? And it's here and now. Trying to get ahead of this push. Of course, Ethan's tasked with being up close. Nobody is above him, so he should just fixate on this cross. Finesse distracts him. He hits the dink, but Nitro finds the head. Finesse then cleans up with one as Twists will take two more. And Kusta yet to respond. So the guns are all that remain. And a four versus two. Kusta flicks to Elige and finds a 2v3. A little bit better, but still too tough a spot to go for it. So they try to exit only to find Stan. Oh, you know what? That smoke that they threw down the ramp, I think it falls in the crack on purpose. It seems to go wide enough. Wow. It seems to go wide enough that... Uh, I also like what Twist there did there as well early in the round. Just expelled all his grenades so that he could push. So that he could have some some impact with them and then go really aggressive. Some people die with way too many nades. So, just a small point. But I think that's that smoke falls in the crack so that the opera coming down the ramp can see over it. I'm not sure if that's okay for sure, but... If we see that smoke again, I would actually be really interested to see that. I feel like it, it could be dangerous in the sense that an opera on top of, say, the train next to Zed could maybe see through it as well. Yeah. But if you're looking to exploit that, then I'm assuming, you know, that's where you're looking is for that kind of a duel. So, could be a nifty trick. We'll have to keep our eyes open. That was last game. No more nifty. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Great time to take a pause. This is, of course, where the newly added Ryu should come into play. A man who is used to working with a guy like Kusta, unlocking his potential back in the days of Selfless. And enemy GG. And enemy GG. It's real throwback right there. Vintage. What they were before that. It's before my time. Hmm. But here we go, lovers. It's the buy. Everybody's got guns. Everybody's got nades. And enough kits to retake if need be. Interesting. Let's see if they take a fight. Again? 
Attention drawn to Ivy, and I want to keep paying attention to how they use it. So, last round. Oh, in a round previous, they, they went there but didn't use it. And Kusta getting that kill is huge. It was a nice flashbang by his teammate. Ah, uh, they've left JDM here this time. Looks like more of a classic split coming out. This time, there's no, no one to assist the bomb, however. Elise has to pick this up. Ricky is down there, which means they could lose the round if he ends up going. Of course, Ricky fires off, so they know he's here. Twist does spot the man on E-Box, but he can't get this kill. Instead, Finesse is afforded one. Twist goes walking round. Up close and personal, it's Ethan to take the next, but he too tagged up. That's the story of this round. So many players for CLG taking kills, but damage in return. Ricky takes a couple shots to the back. Still wary of a man above, but that's not the case. Wow, Twist getting so aggressive right here. Elige might plant for him. Yeah, it seems like it. They've got some pretty good spots right now. Twist is in a position that's going to be hard to kill him, or even realize that he's there. No, Typically, people don't get aggressive enough that they actually push Z and they go for these plants, but he's actually going to initiate contact first. Taking down a man on full health, allowing Elige to find Ethan from behind. So Kusta needs the clutch. He sprays off some shots, makes a lot of noise, and Liquid will take that. Two versus three. An unusual plant, but it perfectly pans out. Oh my god, I can't believe Twist pushed back out that smoke. I mean, I guess he was confident knowing that Elige was a ladder, that if he pushed out that way, he'd be okay. But a huge 2v3, extremely well played. He hears this. Yeah, he knows exactly where it is. Nice composure there by Liquid to take that round back and to find themselves a three point lead. CLG have now gone more than 10 rounds unanswered. Jeez. What is Ricky's special Zeus angle? On train? Yeah. Seems like he wants to deagle from a distance, pull them into him. Pull them into him. Then he's going to hide in the corner. Zap! I love that he Zeus's. I think he's one of the most consistent Zeus's <laughs> in NA, man. I'm, I'm a big Zeus man myself, so. Oh. Not going to work at that distance. It, you, only, you only kill him if you kill him in phase one. Yeah. You let him get to phase two, it's too late. Kusta would love a Zeus. The P250 would work. Like the Liquid are just kind of taking their time with this, being meticulous. Which tends to be effective. As they drop into the ladder, the flashbang's effective as well. Young Ethan never sees it coming. Kusta neither, as his head's popped through the edge of the wall. Finesse firing at feet. As he is all alone. Nice jump. He's eating it up. Oh, last bullet. Oh! oh okay. Another solid anti eco from Team Liquid. They took it slow. Focus on ladder and T con. I think ladder T con, full inner hits, anything like that works out. Inner hits work really well, even though like an inner stack would be extremely effective, just because. People will typically stack outer, play pushed up ladder, look for IV frags, and that's two out of three choke points outside. So it's very nice and very common to try to stack outer, kind of like stacking AO Mirage as opposed to B. There's that double op setup that Liquid used to recompose themselves. Now it's CLG's turn. Kusta and Ricky equipped with the ops, but Cutler gets the backside of twists as he goes charging through. Finesse connects the headshot to Nitro, and Ethan finds another. So this is just CLG across that kill feed. No bomb planted, nothing done. Other than corpses to the wayside. crazy just like full execute outside and it's a matter of who's looking where when what smoke drops who's blind who turns around a lot of it is just timing and uh, uh clg were and it can be very difficult for the cts in that situation so credits to clg for uh, staying grounded gdm would love some kind of a success but instead he 
he takes shots to the chest. It's Cutler with the last one. And CLG now in double digits. They've broken the curse. Again, off of the double op. But it wasn't those snipers that got them all their kills. It was just duels all their way. Yeah. And uh, really good for them that they were able to keep so many people alive. These are, this is money in their pocket, and they are going to be still kind of in danger of a reset. Uh, deciding to double off, which is um, maybe an important adjustment for them because they haven't proven that they can do this every single round. Liquid uh, throwing what looks like a false exec to try to bait out utility. Two, three mollies expelled. That's not too bad. There's still a couple of smokes left and a bunch of flashes, however. Interesting to see that it's not it's not flashbangs used to uh, counter that execute. Liquid back to a slower play. I'm sure they'd love to reset CLG, but at least the defense not going to be completely out of cash. Again, they survived with all five players, so they've made a real chance for themselves. Smoke up the ramp. Watch, let's watch for that crack smoke. Let's see if they actually are going to execute inner. And again, as we see, they've, they've held on to most of their utility. Ooh, nice frag. Oh, that's a good one. It's a meaty grenade. Smokes go barreling forward all the way to the backside, trying to section off the ops, but instead it's Ethan to drop the bomb. Nitro from above as no one covers him there. Rick is still able to take that trade back, so not worse for wear, but still a 4v2. The liege goes creeping through. They never see this coming. He is in a massive play position. Kusta could line up, and he sprays for both. A liege single-handedly swinging this back. Oh, so smart. He crouched. And he spots Rick A. He takes what? a third. Just... Finesse, all that's left. He's... He goes down the ramp. There we have it. A 4K on a liege. The kid is so nuts. I mean, Moses asked James on the desk, would you consider him the best player in NA? And that's at least a play right there that makes an argument for itself. Well, he had stayed crouched and Ricky had no idea and then came over top, just outplayed him completely. He even knows where the fourth kill is coming from. Easy frag. No problem for the boy genius, Elyse. E wonder child. Of course, as mentioned, CLG had the economy to rebuy, but it's not gonna net them the ops. We'll still get them grenades, not a single kit in play. The boost is coming through. Nitro's gonna peek back in, finds Ricky with his back oh. turned, and takes Kusta with him. Another massive opening towards the B site. Elyse goes barreling through, oh. and Ethan holds the line! Sprays it back, takes it to the 3v3, and now it's Finesse who's down. Another opening made, this time at A. Cutler peeks in, drops the bomb, and goes high. As everyone pumps the brakes. Tension falling across the map as Stanislaw's given a chance to creep. But Ethan covers his teammate Cutler, still amongst the trains. This would be big. JDM makes a lot of noise and Cutler will seal this. It's CLG back to the board despite going down 3v5. Dude, I, ha I have no idea what Ethan was doing at Inner. I don't know why he's this close up when there was two people pushing but it ends up being such a genius move and like him waiting as well, knowing that they're not gonna clear him because they wouldn't have expected to kill two people and then push in. I mean, it just made sense for him to do it, but what, why Why was he there? I don't, I actually, I mean, that's probably the question Elise was asking as he ran in, like, what the hell is this guy still doing here? Making plays. Indeed, I guess, yeah. A frantic round has CLG coming out on top. Has them coming back in with an op. That's in the hands of Kusta. Oh. Big flick. Down goes Stan. Misses the follow up. JDM kills Kusta and finds that 4v3. But Ethan, yet again, finding mid round impact. As he holds on to the connector, teammate by his side, but twists. He expects this. Cutler gets into position. Down he goes as Finesse clears out the backside of Ivy. And we're into a 2v2. Another very close round. Molotov bounces off of the trains. Finesse hits another. Nitro with an op has the clutch. And he's brought it back down to the 1v1. Spots Ethan, who's on the ball. Oh. Nitro. Whew. 
15-11 as Liquid Secure OT. That is four rounds, Launders, going back and forth. You can see it has an effect on the economy of Liquid, but they won't mind. Yeah. They've got four rounds to close this map. This is clean, too. Get that info. Ethan had an opportunity. Really sick individual play in that 1v2. Great team play overall. The entries were huge. And uh, sealed, you have nothing left. Like This is like a second round force, basically. They have one UMP to work with. Oh, they did. They dropped on each other's heads again. I don't know. Maybe it is calculated. You doubted them. <laughs> Can't help but feel like CLG are doubting themselves in this round. I would be with this kind of a buy. Especially considering they've lost all these sorts of purchases before. So if history repeats itself, we should watch Liquid moving into victory lane. But we can't get ahead of ourselves. JDM opens up. Finesse is down. And stands just creeping in. Again, they get their kill, one Ivy. Everyone else actually congregating towards B halls this time. Just leaving Stan in position. Continues to apply pressure on Rike, so that's going to distract him. Meanwhile, Liquid getting closer to the B site as we hit this 30 second mark. Cutler got a 1D angle. Shot connects, but not to the head. It's Ethan with one up close. Traded back by Nitro, who finds Cutler then. This looks like Liquid have done it, but the CT's coming in for this pinch. JDM whips round, leaves it all on Rike, who's slain by Stan. And Liquid, towards the end of that half, going back and forth in rounds, are able to seal the deal. They pick up the win on train. 12 consecutive rounds, Launders, in the middle of that half. That's what really turned things around. Again, CLG just barely holding on in that first half, scraping those victories together, and ultimately, they lose. What an insane comeback. Yeah. All rounds. Taste of their own medicine, really. Yeah. Nine rounds in a row for CLG, and or, well, nine to one, and then Liquid do that. Convincing stuff. We'll see what the analysts have to say about it as we throw this back to the Xfinity desk. Take it away. Yeah, thanks guys. That was uh, that was scrappy match. Uh, definitely a big early lead for CLG, and all the clutches and all the situations seem to go their favor. And then Liquid just rips it all from their hands. Uh, like they said, 12, 12 nothing run at a certain point during that game for Liquid. That's incredible stuff. Big clutches as well. Leads with that two v four, getting all four kills. I mean, these are big time plays from big time players. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like Liquid were just constantly eroding against them during the first yeah. half, right? Like they didn't get any rounds, but they just killed them ev at the end of every single round, such that when they win one round, they have to save. Yeah, and that was the start of the comeback, and it was just like, I honestly like in the first ten rounds, I was like, wow, CLG basically is doing everything right. They looked great, it, didn't they? And then it just kind of came out of nowhere. It's like, oh, <laughs> all right, and it's nine to six. Okay, and now you're winning the second half pissed around, all right. Is that is that convincing? Does that kind of a comeback from Liquid make it a, a pretty convincing win in their favor? Or is that is that just kind of like, wow, they, they just kind of stole one away? I think so. I think what they adjusted very nicely towards the middle end of that of their CT half, they were like, okay, what we're doing is not working. CLG's doing slow defaults. They're pretty spread out. How do we stop that? We double up. And then they just made JDM, peak ramp spots, Ivy, top ramp. And you got it would get picks. It was well, nice. Let's start from the beginning, because this is gonna be round one. You wanted to highlight the pistol round from CLG. So what I liked on, on this pistol strat is that CLG went towards Ivy to make some noise, to make some presence. They shot off uh, a couple shots, and so it kind of it made Team Liquid play a little more heavy towards Ivy. As you see, they have one by six Ivy, and then in, in the Z area, they have two people outside. And then as soon as they they made a shot, hey guys, we're coming Ivy. They just walked back to the middle, and eventually just went into uh, an outside take and really much pinch the people outside with the smoke hitting between the six and the stop sign. So it gave we me rain. And we saw CLG do Ivy on the other train matches, right? So it's like, oh, 
Liquid's like, oh yeah, we think they're going to go through Ivy, they're already showing the presence, yeah, I think they're going to do something similar. And then, you know, they have to respect it, like you said. So it's a really good piss round. Smoke and mirrors. Show Ivy and then go out mid. Not bad from CLG. And I mean, yeah, go on there. Let's talk about mind games, Jason. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say is mind games, baby. And I love I love to see the mind games. And as you see the smoke over there, it kind of blocks and kind of forces Twist in a weird spot as he's just all alone in the, in the, in the White Tower. <laughs> that was a lot of ground gained by CLG without without having to exchange any kills. So yeah, maybe pulling a fast one over on Liquid. Uh, James, you wanted to talk about round ten, so this is near the, uh, right at the end, I think, of, of CLG's kind of dominant streak of that yes. first half. So this this is this round is uh, this is interesting. So I want to ta say two things. So CLG has a huge lead. They're going slow towards inner, and nobody's pushing behind them. That's probably because they have a huge lead, right? Nice contact play. FNS doing his job as an entry fragger here, getting space and going one extra and getting that entry onto a leash, right? So it's kind of interesting here, right? Because CLG ends up winning this round, but Team Liquid saves the op and kills everyone, right? So the next round after this, Team Liquid has like, I think they have the one op and then four CZs with half armor, and they win that round. And then CLG has to save after having a nine to well, one. Well, I mean, I mean, let's just not let's not gloss, gloss over that because we actually have the next round as well to talk about. So we yeah. can pull that up, uh, and you can just go right into it. Yeah. So again, this is people kind of like treading a little bit too lightly on on anti force by anti eco type rounds, right? So at the end of this round, you see uh, you see counter logic gaming kind of just equivocating around T mid late round when it's like, just go fast, find where that op is, right? So he tanks the molly here, which is what we wanted to see JDM doing, right? We wanted to see him getting aggressive, unlike his lounging, you know, in his chair, right? So I want him to play the opposite of the way he sits. JDM has the flicks to do whatever he needs to do. And, and we mentioned that in the pregame. That's one of the very cool things, one of the dynamic things about this Team Liquid team is the different ways they're getting JDM involved early to get try and get a pick, get him aggressive, try and find one kill, and then and then work around that if he's successful. Um, let's let's just bring it up. I think round 25 is that Elige highlight, the two versus four. And, and w someone walk us... Uh, no, no, it's not actually. I'm completely wrong. This is... Well, this round... I think they eventually go back. No? This is one where uh, they actually... CLG retakes... Or actually, Team Liquid comes to outside, and uh, well, they just have a nice little retake right here. So you see Cutler's in a pretty good spot. He got a kill, and he's trying to hide, he's trying to stall as long as possible to, to let his teammate come help him out. As you see, Nadi shoots in the back as Stanislav's trying to kill Cutler. So staying alive in this kind of situation is great. You're stalling out. You're not making any crazy moves. Yeah. And you know, in in a game of CS, it's sometimes not always about the kill. It's about it's about staying alive. Yeah. And the sad thing about that one is uh, they win that round and then they lose the next, and they go into you know map like map point with nothing on their backs, right? So it's almost like, oh, we're done now. I think I'm getting bailed out. I think we're going to see that Elise highlight because I, I want to see that again. Yeah. That, it was a very nice round. round. I mean, the positioning out of it was was just insane. Um, but also. I mean, the, the Liquid had a lot of contributors towards the end of this match. I want to ask specifically, how did did you you notice? Because one of the things we talked about was how effective Ethan was over towards Ivy on the T side for CLG. Did we see that? Was that something that CLG adjusted no. away from? Yeah, I think Twist and uh, I think Twist really locked it down. Twist okay. was just pivoting everywhere like a yeah. turret and just two tapping people with the M4. So both the young players going right at each other. Yeah, as it was a good matchup to watch. Um, now, I mean, going in, what is what does this make us feel for the last map of the evening, which is going to be Cobblestone? Again, start with it, end with it. So um, are, we, are we feeling uh, either team kind of getting an advantage out of this? I think Team Liquid's up there. I'm sure CLG's kind of kicking themselves in the bootay right now for, like, almost letting that kind of slip away. They're up 9-1 to on T-side train, and then they fail to adjust while Team Liquid's like... Hey, what are we doing, guys? Let's get focused. How Let's do you how do you refocus? If you're the analyst of a team, and you between these maps, what are you saying to them? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, let's also remember that Liquid beat SK on train earlier this yeah. week, right? So I just wanted to put that in there. Uh, in terms okay. of refocusing, it's just another map, right? Just have a have a short memory, not in terms of your strats, obviously, but just like <laughs> you know, just don't don't forget what you know. Like they played well, like they did a good job. It yeah. might not have been our mistake. Liquid played lights out. Let's come here and it's Cobble. Let's hit him in the mouth. You know, we had a sick run against Cloud9 on Cobble earlier this week, and let's do that again. Cool. New cool. game, new mindset. Yeah. You were a coach at one point. Yes, I was. And that's all I'm going to say about that. 
<laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We're going to go to a quick break, but before we do, North American fans, you've got two big events coming up. You've got ESO 1 New York in September. You've got IEM Oakland out in November. You're going to want to get your jerseys as quick as possible. Shop.ESL Gaming. Get them for all these popular franchises we see playing here in the NA region. Support them when you get out to the events. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's going to be the last map of opening week. See you then.